folks. We're going to get started here in uh, just a few minutes. So hang on and we'll be right with you. Hello and welcome. On behalf of Boyd Cat, thank you so much for joining us today for the virtual live demo of the Next Gen Hex 317. I'm Lindy Young and I'm going to be your facilitator today. This meeting is being recorded, so your consent is by your presence. So thank you so much for joining us. Today we are at the beautiful Edwards Demonstration and Training Center here in Peoria, Illinois. Caterpillar has so graciously allowed us to take over their facility today for our Boyd Cat customers to get the first bird eye view of the Next Gen Hex 317. Today in the dirt, I will have Brian Kane and Brian Stelbrink. They're going to give us a great overview of the 317. And then we will have, it will be about 35 minutes for a presentation. We'll have some question and answers at the end. And if you have any questions during that time, please just put those into the chat box and we will make sure we cover those at the end. Thank you again for so much for joining and I'll, Brian Stilbrink, go ahead and take it away. Okay, thank you, Lindy. And uh, on behalf of Caterpillar, certainly we appreciate you taking time out of your day. Um, we've got some very interesting things to discuss with you today, showcase the new 317, talk about the next generation of excavators overall. And uh, hopefully you'll see some consistency across the offering and kind of showcase it with the 317. So again, appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, my name is Brian Stelbrink. I'm a product specialist with Caterpillar. So involved with uh, launching the next generation of excavators, working with Boyd and other dealers across North America in uh, helping support the product. So uh, along with me is Brian Kane, uh, actually at Edwards, and he's gonna showcase the machine uh, out in the iron as well as a demo. But before we get started with that, I just wanna talk overall about the Next Generation Excavator program because it's not just about the 317, it's about some consistent things we've been doing the last few years uh, with this new platform. It really started back in 2018, as many of you may know, uh, we launched the 320. So our 20 ton flagship machine, followed by another flagship in the product line, the 336. That's really what kicked things off in those two areas, size range of the excavators uh, back in 2018 into 2019. We've int been introducing a number of models since then. You can see a few, just a few pictures 
on the slide here, um, just to name a few, but there's over 20 machines now we've introduced and just the most recent one is this 317. Uh, from compact radius, 15, 25, 35 ton machines on the left side of this chart. Obviously the 336, uh, 349 in the upper right. Uh, so really across the range, all the way to uh, one of our largest machines, the new 395, which we introduced last year, almost a 200,000 pound machine. So that just gives you kind of a reference with the Caterpillar, Caterpillar excavator lineup. Um, with that, we're going to switch gears a little bit and focus on the 317. And this just gives you some of the highlights before we actually show you in the iron on the machine. But the focus of this new 317 was really putting as much performance, as much standard technology, lowering the operating cost, whether it's fuel, whether it's maintenance costs, doing as much of that as we can in a 40,000 pound machine. So this is a pretty exciting size class because I always think of this as it, 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 it's where performance meets very versatile, very transportable machine. So this is about a 40,000 pound machine, which as many of you know, you know that, that is a fine tag trailer machine. So to have the versatility and have this thing work across so many different types of jobs, um, load that thing up on a tag trailer, dump truck pulls it up to a site, load and go, um, do your work that day and maybe offboard material off that site with that dump truck, um, load it up at the end of the day and off to the next job site. Um, in other cases, it spends more time on, on certain job sites. I mean, whether it's a commercial site prep job or heavily used in residential, digging footings, uh, great clearing machine. But again, it's, it's extremely versatile and it's transportation to be on tags and an eight foot six width, width machine, depending on how you configure it, a 40,000 pound machine, depending on how you configure it, with loads of performance in it. So we focused on more performance, whether it's um, hydraulic power, so cycle time, speed, more breakout force in the machine, cranked up the horsepower, 130 horsepower in this package, uh, really unheard of uh, in the industry. So let's take it down in a little more detail. And Scott, if we can uh, focus in on some of the areas of performance and fuel efficiency, and oftentimes these don't go hand in hand, but because we had this clean sheet approach, and this is really regardless of which next generation excavator, but we had the opportunity to focus on more performance in certain areas that we've heard from contractors, you know, are important in the types of jobs that they do with this size machine, um, but also burn less fuel. And uh, that's not an easy task. I mean, the engineers have done an excellent job to make the system more efficient, uh, but also put more power to the ground. And let's talk about the power to the ground first. So we increased the, the engine power from our previous generation. And just to back up, um, this machine, the new 317, it's a replacement for the 316F. Those of you may be familiar with our prior, you know, 16-ton machine, we had a 16E series, a 316F. And now we're moving to the new 317. And what we're able to do is crank this thing up to 130 horsepower and pull that power through into a faster, quicker machine with a little more swing torque, uh, a little more drawbar for climbing slopes and in real softer underfoot conditions. And also work the fronts a little bit differently to where we have more dig force as well. So it's not only a faster, quicker machine, but also um, working in the tough stuff and some of the conditions where you guys are at, especially uh, being able to have more breakout force, more dig force down in the tough stuff or dragging bigger buckets through the material for higher fuel factors, um, certainly important for this size machine. Now, some areas where we also focus with ties in performance, um, we've seen an increase in work tool usage on these. So a lot more of these machines these days are getting hydraulic thumbs, uh, running with couplers, um, some of the demolition tools, whether it's shears or even some multi-processors, hydraulic hammers, of course. And we put more counterweight in the back of this machine, but we were able to manage around that 40,000 pound bogey, which is critical for transport, but kind of move some of the weight around to uh, have the center of gravity in a more favorable position, along with put some more counterweight on the back and take some weight out in some other spots. The net effect is you have a machine that has excellent lifting capability, and sits flat. And especially with some of those larger buckets, 
and some of those heavier work tools. So those are some performance areas that we focused on. Uh, you'll see that a little more in the demo, but um, the next thing is how did we do that yet uh, lower that operating cost for you as well? And some things we did on the fuel saving side, uh, this is an electrohydraulic system. So it's basically operated by wire as all of our next gen excavators are. And what that does for us, it allows us to do some things with increased efficiency, take some of that heat load out of the cab. cab. Those pilot lines in the cab are no longer theirs. They're not radiating any heat. Um, you know, on those warm summer days with the sun beating down, uh, that's less heat generation inside that cab, allows that air, air conditioning to, uh, to keep that cab even cooler. Um, that helps with fuel efficiency also. Uh, we're not having to rely on that pilot circuit uh, we can circulate that oil more efficiently. Uh, we've increased the engine power, yet the pumps are more efficient. We can electronically control them. So that all helps towards fuel saving. The fan system on this machine is also electronic. So there's basically five electronic cooling fans that will run on demand independently if needed. So it may sound a little complicated, but it's basically five of the same fans that are on the backside of that cooling package and those run on demand, helps keep the temperatures where they need to be. It's high temperature capability, helps the machine warm up in the winter time as well, get up to operating temperatures very quickly. So just a more efficient way of doing things to help save fuel. But also I think one key thing here that you guys may be interested in is um, the reversing capability. So standard on this machine, standard out of the factory, you have the auto reversing capability. So it helps purge those cooling cores, helps keep them clean. There's some additional screens that you can put on the inside of the radiator door as well. Um, so again, thinking about higher airborne debris environments, whether it's in some residential demolition, whether it's working in the woods and clearing applications, uh, loading tub grinders where there's a lot of airborne debris, helping think, keep things cool and efficient. So some new things there to, to take a look at. Uh, which helps with performance, helps with uptime, and um, helps save fuel. So I'm going to move from performance and fuel efficiency to the technology side. Another area where we're really excited about, and you may have heard this if you've been aware of our next generation excavators on some of the larger sizes, but to take the standard technology package now down into our small to mid-sized machines, into, our, again, a 40,000-pound, highly versatile load-and-go type of machine, and to have a standard from the factory every 317 is coming out with a 2D grade control system. Okay, so a 2D depth and slope system, whether you're digging footings, whether you're tilling some slopes, whether you're, you know, just doing some drainage work or putting in some farm pile. I mean, basic jobs that previously relied on some level of grade checker or you hopping in and out of that cab to check grade. Um, it's standard, basic in the machine, 2D depth and slope system, helps you be more efficient and uh, saves time on the job and saves, you know, having to have somebody there, uh, ground guy checking grade for you or you being that ground guy uh, hopping in and out of that cab. You're going to see that here in a little bit. Um, you can also get this machine with full 3D from the factory um, or the team over at SciTech can, uh, can install that. Once the machine's out in the field, depending on when you feel that's something you might want to use uh, for your job. So take it from a basic 2D depth and slope system that you can use with a laser or just a reference point on site. Take it all the way up to 3D. Um, the other thing on the right side of this screen that we're pretty excited about, I mean, think about what a lot of these machines do on your jobs. Um, they load trucks um, or they stockpile material. And think about dropping this machine off on site. Maybe you got to move some of that material off site. There's no place to put it there, residential, whatever you're doing. To have an onboard scale system that tells you real time in the cab what's in that bucket without affecting how you operate that machine. As you come out of that cut and you have two tons coming out, uh, basically you know that real time. And more importantly, if you set 16 ton, 14 ton as your target payload, um, it will accumulate that and let you know on the monitor when you're approaching that last pass. And if you need to tip off a half a ton, um, you can basically right load that truck, uh, eliminate the risk of fines, or what happens more often is you're short loading or underloading that truck. So if you can be within 3%, let's say a half a ton smart, 
with all different types of material conditions, whether it's wet material, dry material, more dense, less dense, uh, mix, it's uh, very powerful. So uh, that's an onboard scale system standard from the factory on every 317. So let's move on. Um, another key area, there's just a couple more here and then we'll get out to the machine. But we also focused on operating costs. So more performance, more standard technology, but how do we do that and still lower the operating costs? And I mentioned the fuel, fuel consumption savings. And the other key part of maintenance costs is uh, or operating costs is maintenance costs. So how do we take that down? And we've simplified the hydraulic system. So again, a clean sheet approach. So we've been able to eliminate some maintenance intervals altogether. So on, on most of the machines out in the industry, you know, that pilot oil filter every 500 hours, a case drain filter, um, those are gone. We no longer have those. So that, those are less maintenance points, takes the cost out. And maybe more importantly, it takes the time and potential leak points. It, it, it takes that away. Um, we've extended some intervals on some other things as well. An example, hydraulic return filter. Um, instead of 1,000 hours, which is pretty standard in the industry, we've been up to 2,000 hours in the past. Now we're up to 3,000 on the next-gen excavators. Uh, the air filter, which Brian Kane's going to show you, um, you know, that's a common part up and down a lot of the small excavator lineup. And that, that has an integrated pre-filter, so some of that larger dust, larger debris, uh, gets flushed out before it has a chance to go to the filter. Um, so what that does is extend the life of that filter by having an integrated standard pre-filter. It's nothing that has to be added after the fact or separate um, like previously. So those are some things we've done by uh, simplifying the hydraulic system, eliminating some intervals, extending some intervals altogether, less touch points on the machine, less chance for missed service, more uptime at the end of the day. So. Uh, that's an area that we focused on with the 17 as well as other next generation excavators. If we move to the next area, just a couple left here, and then I really want to get out to the machine and uh, have Brian showcase some of these things. But uh, safety and cab comfort. So on the safety side, obviously, you know, first and foremost of anything, um, what have we done to enhance safety beyond what we've had with the previous generation? And a couple things. Technology is there to help us and also just the clean sheet approach and new design opportunity that we had with these machines. So let's take, take the top two first. Uh, on the technology side, if you think of that standard technology, we have sensors on the fronts of that machine. We basically know where the bucket tips are at any point in time. And what that also allows us to do is uh, set e-fence. So e-fence is a technology feature. There's a number of things underneath that. But basically, as an operator, you can go in there and set certain boundaries that you don't want to work beyond and then go to work. And if you're inside of a building, a skeleton structure, you're finishing up some dirt work inside, you can set a ceiling to where you can still go on about your work. But if any part of those that front parts of that machine get above a certain height that you as an operator went up there and defined uh, by positioning it there, um, the, the machine will step in and help. It will help and prevent you from giving it a little too much boom up command, uh, but it will still allow you to work the stick, work the bucket, work the swing. It doesn't freeze or stop the machine. It only stops that command that would cause you to go into that boundary condition that you set. Another key part of this is cab avoidance, keeping those teeth out of the cab under certain configurations, long sticks with couplers. It's not uncommon on anyone's machine that you can actually get those uh, teeth into the cab. With cab avoidance feature, part of the standard technology, um, you can prevent that from happening, yet not restrict the working range of that machine out front. Um, another key thing is uh, you know, your camera systems, standard out of the factory, the minimum that you can get is a two camera system. It gives you view to the blind side of the machine, right side camera as long as the rear camera shows both of those on the touchscreen 10 inch display inside the cab. Um, some layout areas on the machine, uh, visibility. So, you know, it's best for Brian to show this, but just the sidestep access and to be able to get on top of that machine. But more importantly, I think, is the visibility that that gives to the right side of the machine. You know, cameras are not for everybody. They can certainly help, but some you know, rely on that, the, the old visual method, uh, confirmation. And you have excellent visibility to the front right corner as well as off to the blind side, right side of that machine 
if you're tracking up against objects, if you've got trucks coming in, if you've got people on the ground, you can see very close, uh, right up against the tracks of that machine, the way that those steps are, are sculpted out that you can see in the picture here. Um, also, we try and keep um, people on the ground as much as possible, minimize chances of slips, trips, and falls by climbing around the machine. The more you can keep people on the ground, um, obviously that just helps at the end of the day, especially in some of the conditions you guys are working with, uh, mud, sleet, snow at times of the year. Um, anything we can do to keep those daily maintenance checks and inspections at ground level is certainly welcome. Uh, checking the oil at ground level, having the uh, fuel filters, oil filters, all of that pulled forward, accessible for the guys doing the service, the operators doing the walk around checks, um, who, who's ever around that machine. So those are some things from safety. You'll see more on the machine. If we work to, to the last slide here, I just wanted to close with uh, comfort. And I'll, I'll say this, hopefully, uh, if you haven't had a chance to get in one of the next generation excavator cabs, I would certainly um, encourage you to get with the team at Boyd, um, get you in really any of the next generation excavators on this cab, because the cab on this 317, it's the same cab as on a, a 100 ton machine on a 349 or sorry, a 395, or is on our 50 ton machine, a 349, 352. And uh, so it's a large, completely redesigned cab, uh, more space, uh, more glass. We thinned up the pillars, still providing ROPS protection, uh, but just gives you a more expansive view, more open view, uh, minimize the blind side, minimizing having to kind of hunt between the front glass and top glass if you're road, loading in trucks. Uh, loading trucks in tight, or if you're working around trees, power lines, you've got very good visibility. Um, the display, you know, a 10 inch touchscreen display. There's also a jog dial on the right hand side that you can interact with. Uh, Brian's going to show you some more things out in the iron, but um, it's just uh, we really focused on the ergonomics because we know this is it's your office at the end of the day, um, you know, 10, 12 hours plus day after day, and to try and make you as comfortable as possible. And, um, you know, just as ergonomic as possible and having everything that operator you interact with um, forward of the operator's shoulders, basically, uh, rather than reaching around and, you know, um, access to things back behind you. So putting everything out in front of you and whether you like to interact with that touchscreen display or just prefer some of the short hit buttons, it's kind of a, a lot of this is based on operator preference and choice and, and what you feel most comfortable with. So those are our Hit a few things, and again, we'll showcase some more on the 317, but overall, it's, it's really the next generation of our excavators that, um, you know, there's thousands of them out in the field now in North America. We've had them out there since 2018. The 317s are just starting to land, so this is one of our newest models, but uh, hopefully you have a chance to, to check them out and uh, work with, with Boy Cat in becoming even more familiar with them. So with that... I'm going to send it over to Brian Kane, who is our expert uh, demo operator out at Edwards, instructor extraordinaire, and he's going to showcase the 317. Brian. Well, thank you, Brian. Yeah, that was a great introduction uh, on the 317. Um, if you've been around these next-gen excavators, as Brian mentioned, inside the cab, very comfortable. We'll get in there. We'll show you all the buttons and whistles and features in there, but if you've been in one, as an operator, you've, you've been in them all, so they operate the same as far as all the toggle switches and the buttons and switches, things like that. The cab design is very laid out for the operator to have a, a comfortable day. Yeah, it's your work office. It's your space. Uh, ground level inspections, that's definitely something we're going to cover today. We're going to do a, kind of a walk around on this 317 as an operator's uh, perspective, what I would look for like pre-shift in the morning and when I get done with the machine. So. We'll walk around the machine. We'll took. Uh, we'll kind of look at a few things that are on here that we would generally check out. Most generally, uh, we have a in cab air filter here. So I'd like to kind of look at this a little bit. Mainly, you know, what you're breathing inside your office or inside your cab. It's all going through here. So very accessible to get to. We can look at that, clean it out if we need to. Uh, very commonality. Uh, on this type of filter that we can see here. So just kind of checking it out. It's not something you have to replace all the time or bang out, but very easy access to get to so you can check it out and look and see what's in there. 
as we come towards the back of the machine. Some more ground level accesses, some more things that we can look at. Windshield washer fluid, so we have those right here. We can fill that up if we need to. Check the levels on those. Brian mentioned a little bit about the engine air filter. We have the pre-cleaner on the outside. Again, it's ground level is something that we can get to without having to climb on the machine. We can look at that, and then we can pull this out. This would be the pre-filter that he was talking about. Very accessible to get to, look at, see what's in there. Then you have the filter that's behind it. So this is gonna, you know, take up most of the bulk of the dirt that you would see throughout the day and need to uh, kind of clean out. Commonality on those is a big thing also. So on this 317 machine, you know, having uh, commonality between some of these uh, machines, parts availability, that's kind of a big thing too. So being able to get the parts, being able to interchange all those. We have a radiator fluid that we're able to look at, it's a sight gauge, but we're able to look at that from ground level to see if we need to get up maybe and fill it at all. And then we have our master disconnect on this machine. This machine does take def fluid, so we have our master disconnect here with our amber light, mainly uh, meaning everything, if we shut down the machine, the amber light stays on. Just wait to shut the master off until the amber light uh, is gone. Mainly it's purging everything back into the def tank, uh, so that way if it freezes at night, it freezes into the, inside the plastic tank. Brian mentioned behind our radiators here, we have uh, all these fans, electric fans. They're all behind there. You can see those from up top if you need to get up there and look at them. But uh, yeah, a big, huge fuel savings. Nothing that the operator would have to do throughout the day to kind of look at. But you can see how this compartment, it's kind of wide open. He mentioned a little bit about the electronics on the machine. We're taking a lot of those lines out of here, right? So a lot of the, the, the hydraulic lines, uh, you know, less hydraulic lines, would be better. He mentioned uh, 3D cameras, so this uh, would, this would be an optional camera that's on this side of the machine right here. As you can see, it's kind of hid away though. It's not it's not protruding out or sticking out in any way. Um, if you're working around trees, forestry, uh, demolition work, anything like that, and, you know, it's really it's it's tucked back in there, so it's uh, not hard to hit at all. So it's that's a nice thing. Counterweight. Um, counterweights are a big thing when it comes to excavators because we're always digging out with the front. Customers are really wanting to put larger buckets on the front. Maybe they got some thumbs, different things on there. I know when I was in the field, mainly as big as buckets you could put on the machine, that's what you're looking for. So counterweight to uh, counteract with that, whatever you're putting on the front is a big thing. So heavy duty counterweight on the back. And then we also have our rear view camera that's on here. So this would be the standard one on the rear view camera on the counterweight here. Again, nice tucked back inside there. Um, won't have a possibility of knocking that off with a tree or anything else. We're going to come around to this side of the machine. On this side here, when we open it up, we have our hydraulic uh, tank that's right here. We have our sight gauge on here. We have a little placker on the machine. Um, that tells you exactly how we need to have the machine park. So what do we need to do? We need to have the stick vertical on this machine. And then it gives us uh, where this oil uh, gauge is in here. As we come back to towards the back of the machine here, we have our fuel filters. We have our sight gauge for the fuel. Sometimes in the winter time, depends on if we get any moisture in there, you may see some gum stu come up stuff in here, maybe whitish looking. We're able to drain that out through the bottom. We have some hoses that we can contain that um, debris if we need to. As we kind of come towards the back of the machine, I'm going to say, Brian mentioned a little bit about the uh, engine oil dipstick, so we're able to check that from ground level. Right here, I don't have to climb up anything. I don't have to get on the machine. I have easy access to that, and I can check that oil from all from the ground level. If in any way, if there's any way I need to get in the machine to add oil or to look at something different on the engine, Mainly, there's another oil dipstick on top. We can add the oil, and then we can check it up there the same way as we would down here. We don't have to get up and down with the machine multiple times. Back in here, we have our engine oil filter. I mentioned, uh, Brian mentioned that also. If you're an owner operator or a larger company that has a lot of these machines, uh, you know, you want to be able to maintain the machine yourself. It's a very easy access to get to. Uh, you don't have to crawl underneath the machine. Cartridge filters on here. And as you can see, this compartment, it's, it's wide open now. 
took a lot of those hoses out of there, a lot less hoses, um, could be a lot less downtime for us. As we mentioned, another standard camera over here. This would be the side, ver uh, the the view of uh, kind of the blind side as the excavator is operating. This one in the back one would be the standard camera. We have the other one on the other side. It's a third camera, and then you have another one on top of the machine to marry all those together for a bird's eye view. That's an, also an option, a 360 view. We got a mirror up here that's very visible from inside the machine when we're in there on the blind side. That's what we're looking for. Maybe we can't see down here on the side. We can always use that mirror. We mentioned uh, the ease of accessibility, uh, accessibility of getting onto the machine. So you can see this is our fuel tank here. I'm not very tall, I'm not the tallest person in the world. I could probably fill it from ground level, but it's still an option that you can reach right here. And, you know, very easy to get to, it's right here. As we come towards the front of the machine, mentioned also a little bit, we got the fuel tank kind of pushed back a little bit. We don't have anything obstructing our view and we're sitting inside the cab here. So we're able to see to this blind side, whatever that is to see. It's actually kind of pushed back here a little bit. It's got that curve on there. So we can see everything over here that we need to see. Using our camera and mirrors, it's very, very easy to see. This would be our def tank. This would be our def tank fill. Again, it's another ground, uh, ground level feature that we have. We have a sight gauge on here. It's got a little bubble in it. So that way, um, when, we, when we're filling up the tank, we want to fill up to the, to the white line here, leave a little bit of room in that plastic tank um, in case uh, we have expansion or anything. These little placards right here, they're on the machine, they're pretty nice. Um, when I was in the field as an operator, never really even looked at those, but uh, most of the time they're covered in dirt and debris and everything else, but if you know where they're at, you can kind of search around on those for sure. You can see where all your oil checks are at, where all your grease points are at, when you need to service the machine. So it's a very kind of um, really, really easy reference for you, for you to look at. Okay, we'll come up to the front of the machine. Kind of just looking over our linkages. We have our, uh, the sticks that's on here. Mainly this machine, it's equipped with a quick coupler. So with the quick couplers, a very simple, easy to thing to use in these next gen excavators. With the flip of a toggle switch on our left hand side, we're able to operate that with ease. Everything inside the cab, when we get in there, you'll check that stuff out and everything is all forward to us. So it's all right here. We don't have to look behind us. We don't have to check anything, anything at all. It's all right there for us. So with the quick coupler, uh, very easy to use. Hydraulic quick coupler. Um, Brian mentioned once we get into the cab, we'll talk about grade and payload also, but different, different buckets. So mainly through a measure up process, we'll measure up the bucket um, and then we know where relatively, where the teeth are at all times. So in the monitor, we're always gonna need to know which bucket to mainly pick. It depends on what we're doing that day, if it's a ditch digging bucket or maybe a spade teeth bucket or it's a narrow bucket. We can, mul we can put multiple buckets in there and then just pick those buckets to whatever he or she may need. That way when we run grade and we run our payload, it's more accurate. So that's a little bit about the walk around on the machine. Um, if you have any questions, we'll have a question and answer here at the end of uh, our session on this machine. And mainly we're gonna kind of get into the cab uh, and check, that, check it out and see what's inside here. Gonna do a little demonstration of some grade and payload and everything else that this machine has to offer. It's again, it's very accessible. Um, mainly as we get into these machines, This kind of folds up a little bit, gives us a little bit more room to kind of get into the machine for sure. It's on our left-hand side, but it gives us a lot, a lot of uh, accessibility to get into this machine. Um, mainly, once we're in the machine, uh, it's the same features as we would generally see in a machine for sure in these next-gen excavators. So as we get into the machine, mainly on our monitor right here, it's a push button start. So we don't have a key in this machine whatsoever, but it is a push button start that we're able to use. 
um, very intuitive. Um, it's just, just like anything else you could think of. Um, mainly just turn it on, it's gonna turn green, and then we're able to start the machine. On our monitor here in the front, um, we have, we'll go down the console here first. So we have that jog dial that Brian mentioned. It's right here on my right hand side. We can use that jog dial to jog through anything that we would kind of see. If you have like a fancy car, you probably have one of these. I don't really have one in my car, but you're able to jog through anything that you would need to go through. If you're not the type of operator that kind of likes to reach up and touch anything, this jog dial works very excellent to do the same options. Again, everything is kind of pushed forward. We have a radio, we have our air, uh, home screens, windshield uh, washer or windshield fluid, anything else we need to do, our lights, travel modes, and then mainly this is our throttle dial over here. So all those things combined and put together, it's very, very easy for the operator to use if they've been in one. So now we'll kind of walk through the monitor. We'll give a little explanation on a few things. This would be the home screen that you most generally would see. On here we have uh, our home screen. Down here we have our gauges. And then we'll kind of toggle through this a little bit to kind of see what we need. We mentioned the 360 visible camera. camera. Again, that's an option, but I'll just kind of show you how that really works and what it looks like. Mainly, um, it takes all those cameras that we talked about, the side camera, the back camera, um, and a top camera view, and it gives us a bird's eye view of this machine 360 degrees around the machine. Again, Brian mentioned some people, they don't really like cameras. They just kind of like to look around, but this, ver this view right here, if you're working around any type of application around, you know, pipe application, people around you, it just uh, machines around you, it just gives you a, a little bit safer kind of point of view to throughout the day to kind of look at. So it's a pretty good option. Mainly we're gonna go to our settings. We're just gonna walk through a few things that, um, that we would mainly wanna use that I think would be a, a good thing to use as an operator. Everybody likes to maybe run different joystick uh, configurations. So that's one thing we can get to right here. We can configure, configure our joysticks. Um, on what we even need, so lever pattern, if we wanna change those from ISO to BHL, just a touch of uh, on the screen here, we're able to change those, whatever we would like. Right now, when we start this machine, it's in guest mode. So here at Edwards, a lot of times, we will put our machines into, we just give ourselves a number like one, two, three, four. And this is something the company can do um, as a whole or just in individuals. So mainly as I enter that one, two, three, four, it comes up uh, Edwards Demonstration Learning Center. This is my joystick uh, pattern that I like to run. And then this gives me the bucket. I mentioned the bucket for grade and for payload. That's something you need to know which bucket's on the machine so that way it's measured up and you have the right one on there so everything's most accurate. And this would be kind of uh, my response time. I have it in fast controls. All these buttons and switches and everything else that's on my joysticks in these machines, you can change to whatever he or she may like. So typically here at Edwards, we set our left joystick for everything with payload and our right joystick, everything to do with maybe grade. Um, and that's how we set ours up. But you don't have to, you could change those to answer your phone, anything else that you would like to do throughout the day also. Again, it's always gonna ask to warm up. It's just getting the hydraulic oil warmed up. You don't have to deadhead the cylinders anymore. Um, but that's all that's asking for. And then we have shortcuts down here at the bottom. Mainly this would be grade. Um, if we were gonna look at grade, these would be the shortcuts we could get to. And also there, there's many different ways to get to those applications. We could use our joysticks if we wanted to. Uh, first of all, uh, cab avoidance. We talked uh, about those and we have those. So mainly we could turn our cab avoidance on just coming in here. And now I've turned that on and that won't let the bucket come through the cab. So through the measure up process, it knows where those teeth are at all times. You could also manually change that and configure it to different areas also. You can get into the monitor and you can change the configuration so maybe you want to avoid the cab by a foot or two foot, maybe above the machine or below the machine. So that's always an option that you can do also. So this would be the screen that we would see for e-fences that comes up. And mainly, we're just going to demonstrate how we would set uh, a fence on the left. 
a couple different ways to do this. If this was an object over here that I wanted to avoid or did not want to swing any more to the left, I would get to this screen, and mainly this is going to come up, and it's going to say 2D E-Fence Swing. So this is what I'm looking for. I don't want to swing any further left. I turn this on. You can hear an alarm that kind of goes on there. It just gives me a warning. As Brian mentioned earlier in the conversation, it's not going to hinder the machine, stall out the machine, anything else. It's just going to stop the machine from going through that. Get an audible alarm. Once you get out of that kind of where we set that, then it, the noise goes off. Everything's good. You can still operate. Then let's say, okay, this is the right side that I don't want to go into anymore. Same operation. I get where I want to set, and then mainly I could just turn it on. And it's just telling me on here it says 52 degrees. So if I know the degrees from center of the machine over, I could input the degrees or number if I wanted to, or I could just set the bucket over there and everything would be good. We have uh, this kind of this green area that you see on the monitor right here. Mainly that's just saying that's the avoidance zones we can't go to. So as I have this machine, mainly I'll give it a full left command. The machine stops, it will not go any further whatsoever. And then as I go to the right, I'll give it a full command to the right. The machine stops, no further. Audible alarm, I can still do whatever I'd like. I can still dig anything else I'd like to do. No hindrance of the machine whatsoever. The other uh, good thing about all this kind of technology that's on this machine, you can run everything together at once. You don't have to just run one thing or another thing or anything else. It all runs in conjunction and you can run it all together. So the next thing I'm gonna look at is grade. I have these shortcuts at the bottom that are on here that kind of get me to different screens that I maybe he or she may like to go to. Um, grade settings, we're gonna to go to that. Um, you can set their tolerances in here. You can set the sound setup. Personally, personally, I like the sound setup on this machine because when I used to dig basements all the time, I'd have a ground guy or ground gal chasing me around all day with a laser and I'd hear those beeps. Those beeps were fast beep means you need to go down, slow beep means you need to go up. So I could hear those. So mainly on the screen here, I can see some arrows, and then I'll hear some beeps. So those beeps are just telling me, hey, you need to go up or down. So I don't have to look at the screen throughout the day. I have this joystick right here, toggle switch. Mainly that gets me a quick screen to the grade also. So let's just say I want to do um, three, we're going to do three feet, a negative three feet, so a three foot cut is what I'm telling the machine I would like to do. So this is the, this is the 2D grade that uh, Brian was talking about, indicate. So mainly if I had a hub here or anything else, I would just want to bench that. This is where I'm asking to bench. It could be a stake. This is imaginary object that's right here. Mainly I'm gonna press the button. It's a grade bench. It says it's uh, active and I have a 2.99 cut. Um, and then that's telling me I have 2.99 to go down. This is here, it's gonna show me where this is at. So as I dig, mainly I still have my e-fences on. Those can all work together. And as I'm kind of going through this, you can see those numbers kind of change in there a little bit. And then as I get down to grade, it's gonna tell me when I am kind of close to grade. I just operate just like I normally would. I don't have to do anything special. You can see the arrow bars on the left-hand side or the numbers at the bottom kind of going down. It's going down to that desired grade that I have I put into this machine. Right there, you can hear an audible alarm right there. It's just telling me that's a perfect, that's a three-foot cut from where I benched from. So if there's a grade stake out there and it says it, that I need to go down six foot, I can just still put that six-foot cut in there. Um, any number that I need to put, even a fill, so um, digging basements, uh, you may need to dig some of the footing area a little bit deeper, and then you need to run the floor a little bit shallower. So you can put presets into this also that will help you out throughout the day. Um, you can put up to four presets in here that you just can mainly just touch uh, at a button. Again, that's the arrows that you would hear saying here, I'm 0.16, close to the desired depth. Now I'm on, I'm on target. These would be the presets over here. If I needed some different presets in there, I could program in there, and I could just run through those without having to go back to any other screens. So we'll leave the grade on. It's saying everything's good. I'm on grade. 
So now I've taken this machine, uh, mainly I'm, maybe I'm digging a basement, and now I want to load some trucks. So I'm on grade, and now let's just say I want to just run this grade screen that they keep, or the payload screen. This would be the payload screen that I would see. I come to it. And I want to turn it on. Right now I have a six ton target in there. And again, this is an imaginary number. I can put any number I want into, but I've just put six ton in there for demonstration for today. Mainly this would be our truck. So this is our truck total. We have three trucks that we've loaded with this machine. This would be zero, that would be, we have zero buckets going so far. So we'll kind of watch that screen if you can. I'll give a little demonstration of kind of how that works. And with this system, mainly I still have that grade running too. The grade is right here on my left-hand side. It still can run that grade and run that e-fence together. And as I grab that bucket, the, mainly the bucket turns green. I have 1.39 tons in that bucket so far. And then when I dump, mainly it just adds it right to the truck with an ease. It weighs on the swing. So as I'm running this machine and I give, uh, I pick up this uh, material that I have right here, it gives me a low level weight of 1.2 or so. As I swing, it gives me the, that perfect number and then it adds it to the truck. So in this truck, I've got 2.6 ton. I'm just gonna keep on digging as I'm going through there. And mainly, like I said, it weighs that uh, on the on the fly. I, I will get a little bit of audible alarm. I have a green, uh, kind of a green target down there. So it's just saying, well, you're getting close to your target. And again, none of this stuff is gonna stop the operator from doing anything. You still be able to run all that stuff um, going throughout the day. So I have four tons in my truck right now. Two tons to go. And now I'm gonna get this green, kind of another green symbol down there on my target payload. So it's saying, oh, I'm getting close. So we'll grab a bucket here, see if we can get over that. So now I have a red dot on there. So that's mainly just telling me that I'm gonna overload the truck. So best practices mainly, I would just wanna kinda of tip off to this pile right here. It says I'm a little bit over on the truck. So mainly I could just tip off to what I would need to get into the truck. Now it's saying, oh, that's pretty close right there. Swing over, dump that in there. I've got 5.8 tons in the truck. So uh, it gives me that confidence that that's what I put into the truck. And mainly once I've filled up the truck, whatever I'm looking for today, then I can store that truck. Um, I store the truck, the truck goes away, I'm ready to load another truck. So again, if I could put 15, 20 ton, anything I wanted into the target, or I could just load the trucks um, and just see that live weight as I'm going throughout the day. So that's just a little bit uh, kind of a technology on this machine. Many more options that are on here that uh, you'd be able to kind of see and feel. And again, as Brian mentioned, if, if you haven't been on one of these next-gen excavators, work with uh, your local dealer board cat there to, to get out and see one, get your hands on one, to kind of uh, look and, and see it and touch and feel it. So I think we have some time maybe, hopefully, for uh, if I didn't take too much of everybody's time. But uh, thanks uh, for joining us here at the Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center. Uh, and really enjoyed to have the opportunity to explain a little bit about the 317 to you. And we'll throw it back to, to you, Lindy. Wow, thank you so much, Brian. I had no idea that the 317 has up to 45% more operator efficiency. It was nice to see, nice to be so close to the control screen and see the technology firsthand. Thank you, that was a great job. So jumping into the questions, it looks like we have a few. Brian Stillbrink, I think this one's gonna be for you. Is the payload system standard? Okay, yeah, so Lindy, that's a great question. And so the payload system that, that Brian had demonstrated here, yes, that is standard. So every 317 is gonna have that system. The key is that the, you know there's some measure up that's done, some relatively quick calibration to make sure that thing is accurate and dialed in. But um, yes, it's standard. And you guys use multiple buckets. You know, it's a matter of telling the machine when you change the bucket over, We've also got some things going on with work tool recognition to where that machine 
will eventually start to recognize exactly which bucket and automatically jump to that bucket setting. But um, so that's a little more information than maybe the question was intended for. But uh, yes, it is standard and uh, works with multiple buckets uh, across the machine as well. Okay, great. Thank you. We have one more. Are there any rubber track pad options for the 317? Okay, so uh, yes, you can configure the machine, you know, many different ways. It depends how, how it's brought in. Um, but there are rubber track pad options available for this size machine. They are 24 inch pads. And it's really, a, you know, for those of you that may be working in the street, you know, on concrete, working up against gutters, um, curbs and gutters areas. So what it, they're 24 inch pads, which gives you an eight foot six overall width, which is critical for some tag trailer uh, and permitting standpoint. But um, so yes, there are rubber track pads available in that width. All right, thank you so much, Brian. Audience, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put those in the chat for us. And while we are waiting, I have a fun question for Brian Kane out there in our opera as our operator. What would be your favorite environment to dig in? Favorite environment to dig in? Yes. Take that as you will. I'll take that as I will. Okay. So a favorite environment to dig in. Most operators, if you know any operators, a lot of them, they may get angry at a lot of things. So mainly for me, if I could just kind of, if there was a job I had to do um, and I, I had the option to go dig in some compacted clay out in the middle of nowhere and nobody else around, and I had this 3D option on here that showed me all the grade I don't have anybody else kind of chasing me around the job site. That would be my perfect job site. Just me all alone, my machine, my own office, and my 3D grade. Fabulous. Sounds great. Thank you for sharing. Okay, I have one more question while we're waiting to see if anyone has anything in the chat. And this is for either Brian. What would be your best advice to our customers, either in this next gen product or any other machine just anything in general well i guess i'll i'll go first here um i would say you know adapt the machine and what it has to offer to what you are using on your job and that may sound very basic but i guess we showed you so many different things and sometimes that can be overwhelming you know, changing the joystick buttons, uh, grade, defense, payload. There's so much technology standard in these machines. It can sometimes be overwhelming, but really picking out what can help you on your job the most. And then how do you start to introduce additional bits of technology that maybe you may find that can help you that you originally didn't think, or you move to a different type of job? Because we have a wide range of customers that they use the machine for clearing. You know, it's a clearing and they're really not using any of the technology whatsoever as far as e-fence grade payload. We have customers that are using uh, only payload and they're, they're buying next-gen machines today just because it has payload. That is the primary reason why. So I guess that's kind of my advice is kind of understand it, but don't overcomplicate it and kind of pick and choose what, what makes the most sense for your operation. I don't know anything to add, Brian. Yeah, I'd like to just kind of echo on that, Mr. Stelbrink, for sure. Um, um, adapt it to what he or she needs or what your operation is, just like you said. Um, coming from the field, mainly most of uh, my 20 years in the field, I dug basements. With this C317 machine, um, this is something that's 2D grade. Again, it's, uh, it's a little complicated, you might think, to just kind of see and run. But once you get used to this system and... It enables you to take a lot of the guest work out, so I want to put maybe put some slope in it. Or I'm just trying to, maybe I've got a sewer application and I've got to dig eight feet deep, put maybe a manhole in or thing, anything like that. I'm able to program that in there and then get close to that eight feet, get close to what I need to do, take uh, maybe my uh, labor out of the hole or anything else like that for safety-wise and just use that um, these capabilities to your advantage. Just like you said, the e-fence, is it something that maybe I would use every day? 
maybe, maybe not. Depends on where I'm at. If I'm clearing trees or I'm out in my middle of the clay field with my 3D system, probably won't use this, you know, e-fence. But coming inside, uh, maybe in a in a structure. So prior to cat, I never really operated inside machine inside structures. But that's always something that may happen for sure. But just adapting all these technologies, some of them you're going to use. And the great thing about these next gen excavators, you can still just dig with them. You can still run them. They're still going to run just like you're used to. They're very quick. They're very fast. Um, so yeah, all this technology, it's a great thing to offer. Eventually, once you get into the machine you'll adapt some of these kind of features and benefits uh, to yourself and you'll be able to use those and uh, have a better quality job and uh, very efficient. Okay, that was some great advice. Thank you so much. So it does look like we have one question come through the chat. Brown Steelbrink, I think you might be able to answer this better. Um, they have asked, when will these be available? Okay, so uh, we are shipping the machines out of the factory uh, as we speak. So depending on the order rates and, and, and we're, what Boyd has coming in, you should see these landing within the next couple of months, first units arriving. So we're actively shipping them now. Great, thank you, Brian. And hopefully that answered your question. And without any more questions, thank you so much, both Brian's. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today for this live demo of the Next Gen Hex 317. If you want to learn more, please go to our website at boydcat.com to get in touch with your cell, regional sales rep. Or you do have my email, and if you have any follow-up questions or would like any information, please just go ahead and give me um, a little shout-out. A uh, big thank you to Caterpillar for letting us show the iron and live in the dirt today at Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center. It was very much appreciated, and I don't know if you all learned anything, but I definitely did. And just thank you so much uh, for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.